plumber that goes to work at his plumbing job and works all day as a plumber is not the same guy in a few years that's going to own a $5 million plumbing business. Jared Williams, welcome to the podcast. Oh, hey, what's up, man? <laughs> How are you? I'm doing great. Stuck Sorry, I caught you. I, was, I know I did. I was making I was, some notes here. I was really hoping that we could keep vamping on uh, our click funnels joke because I thought it was just so good, you know. So when we just, our you know, for that uh, behind the, joke. yeah, 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 kind of behind the scenes, uh, behind the paywall content, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Gotcha. If I, if I say it enough times, it'll become a thing. That I'm, I'm just, I'm just seeding the field, and the demand will be there. It will be there. Okay. Yes, sir. Build field it. of dreams, building it. That's coming. Yeah. <laughs> Happy Podcast Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Happy Podcast Wednesday. That, yeah, it is. That should be one of those like fake holidays, you know, like <laughs> sunny Thursdays or whatever people yeah. do. Podcast Wednesday. It might as well be, right? Dude, podcast Wednesday. It's a good day for a podcast, I feel like. Like you're halfway through the week. How, how come? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like sometimes it's hard to work a whole Wednesday. You just kind of want to get done earlier. This isn't really <laughs> like working. It's like, cool, I get yeah. to talk to somebody yeah. now. Get to chill out. Yep. Discuss some stuff. Yeah, it's fun. It's a break from the break from the monotonous, like task driven workflow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I like podcasts. So, I think they're fun. I want to do some more. Yeah. I, th- I think they're fun too. It's fun to just like talk. I mean, I'm the type of person that I like learn about what I know when I talk to people yeah. about it. I'm the kind like, of I don't really know. I don't know what I know until you ask me questions. And I'm like, dang, I actually knew the answer yeah. to that. <laughs> dang, I'm one smart guy. Or dang. Huh. I'm not as smart as I thought I was. One of the two, right? <laughs> That's a good question. Huh, I never yeah. thought about that before. Yeah, you are a good talker. That's why I need you around, right? Yeah, I just try my best. You know, I've known a couple of really good talkers in my life, and um, well, that's pretty much where that goes. <laughs> okay. You're retarded. You're a good talker, but you're kind of dumb. <laughs> hey, you know what? You, we all have our strengths. We all have our strengths. Yeah, and our weaknesses. We all have our strengths. We all have our weaknesses, but you know what? My strengths are my weaknesses. I know you've talked about that before. I know, but it's true. About? It's like my greatest strength is also my greatest weakness at times. I think that's like yeah, I, everybody. Yeah, I always hear that. Like a lot of times, like our greatest superpower is yeah. also our greatest weakness, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, what would you say your superpower is? Oh, dude, you should go first because I have to think about this. Oh. Um, my my superpower, let's see, I would probably say like charisma, something in that. Mm-hmm. Like if I can if I can be in the room with you, like I could probably talk to you and entertain you mm-hmm. and make you laugh and all that kind of stuff. Uh-huh. Um, now, how that turns into a weakness, probably because I want to make you laugh and I want to be your friend. Mm-hmm. That sometimes having hard conversations, I can get there. It just takes me a long time. Right. Where like like if I had like. Five coworkers who I'm very close with. Yep. You know, and then like they're doing something that isn't quite right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've learned a lot from this. So like at my last job, this would be the thing where I'd be like, man, I gotta talk to that guy about that. It take me a while to get to convince myself that it now was the right time to do it. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't able to just sit them down and give it to them straight when I wanted to. I had to like really work it up. Once I could get there, I could do it and it would work it, like it would happen, but I couldn't uh-huh. just be like, oh, I gotta go talk to that guy. <laughs> and then just go do it. Like I'd have to like think about it. Like, okay, do I really have to talk to him? Maybe, maybe they'll just figure it out, you know? Cause I just didn't want to engage in that conflict right. and like hurt the relationship. Right. Um, to any of you out there listening who have a similar trait to me, what I did find is that it never hurt the relationship. Yeah. Uh, Cause I would just be able to have the conversation with them yeah. and then they would take what I said to heart and then they would, either change behavior or they wouldn't. And then that would show me something about them. There's only one time yeah. where a guy didn't respond well and he freaked out. In a good and, relationship, then, I think that will only build the relationship stronger. Cause it, yeah. like if, especially if you're the boss, like talking about plumbing business owners and plumbing companies and junk when, cause guys going from being a plumber, right. To now having to manage these people, that's not always mm-hmm. their strong suit. That's not, mm-hmm. that's not always like a thing that they're used to. And so, like you said, like as the boss and the plumbing business owner, if you can have a good relationship there and you can go to them with those things easily, 
it actually makes mm-hmm. the relationship better because it puts you back in that. I'm not your friend. I'm your boss. Right. Yeah. And not, yeah. not that you can't be friendly and be mm-hmm. involved mm-hmm. in their lives and actually care for them. But, but mm-hmm. there needs to be that respect of, okay, this guy is the boss. Right. Yep. Yep. And I don't, and it- I don't step on that. Right. And it is possible too. Cause yeah. some guys, like I know there's this pushback where it's just like, they'll be like, yeah, but you can't be their friend and their boss. And you can like, like it is for me, like when I have conversations with like coworkers that I have now, okay. you know, it's like, it's very natural for me to be able to like have a conversation. Like, how is your life? Like, how are things? How's your wife? And then in the next breath, just switch the tone yep. and be like, also, this is what you need to do in work. And this is where it is. Yep. And they, people appreciate that. Oh yeah. Because then there's this, like, I care for you, but we also understand the hierarchy and that's okay. Yep. Like I'm your boss. I'm gonna tell you what to do and I expect you to do it, but I can still care for you. Like it, it really yeah. is possible. Yeah, it is. It's not, it's not impossible to do. Yeah, I agree. hundred percent. Really good book on like management styles is the 10 minute manager. Everybody yeah, should go I don't think that. I read that one. It's a good one. It's just basically like the gist of the book is like, be nice and friendly to all your coworkers, create an environment where anybody can come to you for anything and then set your expectations up front. When they don't follow those expectations, mm-hmm. pull them aside separately and say, Hey, real quick in one minute, it's not 10 minute manager. It's one minute manager. That's the part. Right. <laughs> in, one minute, gotcha. in one minute, in 10 minutes, yeah, tell 10 them minutes, what they did wrong. This is a really long conversation. No, yeah. in, in one real quick minute, you just go to them and he like, Hey man, appreciate you doing this, yeah. this, and this. Hey, but this thing over here, I need you to do this better because of this. And this is what yeah. you need to do. Done. Right? Yeah. But in the same yep. way, like you need to go back to that same person when something goes well or somebody's doing something well. Mm-hmm. You need mm-hmm. to recognize that usually in front of people at that point. So like in your yeah. team meetings, like we have meetings every Monday morning and every Thursday morning. And my general mm-hmm. manager does this very thing. He goes and looks back on the week previously and says, what's one thing that I can go, Hey man, Andrew did a really good job on this, right? Good job right. on that, dude. Appreciate right. that. And just lets him know, Hey, we appreciate you as a company. I mm-hmm. appreciate you as a manager. Like, mm-hmm. thank you for doing the thing we wanted you to do, right? Mm-hmm. And then that employee feels really good because you just did that in front of all of your other employees, okay? And then the next yep. time you have to come to him and say, hey, you screwed this up. I need you to do it <laughs> this way. He has that mm-hmm. whole background of you being like, hey, good job on that. Appreciate that, right? Yeah. And it's a, it's yep. just a super good management style that we found that works really well for plumbers and the personalities that plumbers have, right? Yeah, definitely. We're not not like Mm -hmm. office people. We're not, you know, I don't know, super touchy feely. We're not into Mm -hmm. weird stuff. We're just Uh, you're you're pretty touchy feely in my experience. You're pretty touchy. It's all just underneath a veneer of tough guy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They all have underneath. It's all maintain their tough guy aura, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, (laughs) the reality is like they're plumbers and they're not used to coming from environments mm-hmm. where everybody talks about their feelings and and expects you know levels of i don't know decency in your talk or whatever right they're, they're used yeah to, sure like a construction job where everybody's talking yep. crap everybody's yelling at everybody mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so if you can just come in like real quick with decency and pull them aside they respect that you're not yelling at mm-hmm. them like their last boss did and Mm-hmm. then if you can congratulate them in front of everybody, like they've never had that mm-hmm. happen. That just mm-hmm. doesn't happen in the plumbing world. Right. Yeah, sure. Yep. So super easy way just to manage your guys. Yep. It's great. goes a long way too. little words of praise. Yeah. So long as they're genuine, go a long way. Oh yeah, totally. Especially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For the right guy. For sure. Oh yeah. Yep. And that comes back to you knowing your guys. Cause if you know your guys and you know how you can, praise them a way that makes sense, yep. right? Because if you don't know them and you're just trying to shoot out, like I had this one supervisor way back in the day where if we did like, if we got these planes out on, on time, he was like, you know what guys, uh, I'll give you a pizza party. And uh-huh. we were like, dude, this is the most out of touch offer <laughs> for us to do this the entire month and to get a pizza party. I can go have a pizza party right now. Right. 
like you're not offering me any, but it was just so out of touch. Like right. if he would have known us, he would have understood that that is just a stupid offer. It doesn't make any sense. Yep. It's not going to motivate. It's just going to, ah, screw this guy. Yeah. You know, we found that like giving stuff like pizza parties and whatever bonuses and all that stuff, it's less appreciated than just the dude, you did this thing. That was awesome. Keep it up. Mm -hmm. That was rad. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That what I just said is so much more appreciated from our guys than any pizza party or any extra mm -hmm. day off or anything, right? Hmm. Even yep. a bonus. Like you, I've given my guys bonuses a lot. Give them a thousand dollar bonus, and they're like, "Hey, thanks, man." <laughs> but but you like go to them and you say, "Hey, man, thanks for working here. I really appreciate you." keep up the good work. Like you're killing it in these areas. Mm -hmm. And I freaking love mm -hmm. it. They, mm -hmm. they like melt in front of you. Right. Yeah. And it, to me, it's like, okay, I can do that all day long. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. easier than giving them a thousand dollar bonus. Mm -hmm. Not that you shouldn't give them bonuses, but you should definitely be doing both. Right. Yep. Yeah. I mean, they work hand in hand. Yeah. Cause they can like, like, like at the end of the day, like we're really not, no one is strictly motivated by one thing. And I think that the external motivators of either like punishments or rewards can only get a person so far. Right. And a lot of the times then they're dependent upon that. Like, like it's funny because I've talked to so many people and I, I've been approached in this way where they're like, Hey man, like if you pay me more, I'll work harder. And I'm like, dude, you're just doing it, going about it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Like, um, no, already no. <laughs> like you've already shown me that, that like you're not working hard right now and now you're asking for more money and then you'll raise your game. So you're telling me that you're just being lazy right now is all I'm hearing. Yeah. And you're telling me I'll stop being lazy if you pay me more. Like, no, yeah. how about you just work harder? Yeah. Like we can work on that. And then the money will come if, if it makes sense for me to give it to you, if you're valuable. Exactly. So, yeah, sometimes those external motivators where it's sort of counterintuitive because our culture and the way we think is all about you give a thing, you dangle a carrot, and the carrot will produce a result. Right. But then so much what happens is once that carrot goes away, the result just stops. And like yeah. people just kind of hang out at the same level. So, or people just don't care about the carrot, right? Yeah. True. So, like for us, like we try to motivate our guys with this sliding pay scale. Basically, if they come in and they, sell more hours they make more money right and it doesn't motivate them commissions <laughs> sliding pay scales bonus incentives they're just not motivated by it but yet and i think this has to do with like the younger generation nowadays because all my guys are a little mm -hmm. younger than i am and i think mm -hmm. it's they want like your guy said he he came to you and he asked for a pay raise right and then he was gonna mm -hmm. work hard that's mm -hmm. the new generation like you have to be willing in this day and age with the younger generation to give to them first and then they'll give back to you. And it may mm -hmm. take a little bit. And that's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sure to like people my age and older. That's like the silliest thing in the world. They're like, what? Right. No, you give to me and then I give you more money. Right. Like, sure. That's how we sure. think. Um, you mm -hmm. come to work and do a good job and show that you're worthwhile. And then I will give you a raise. Mm -hmm. But what this newer generation expects is you're like, I'm going to pay you more than anybody else with all these benefits if you come work for me. Right. Right. And then when they show up mm -hmm. and you're like, hey, plus we have this other benefit and this other benefit and we're giving you this thing, then they feel mm -hmm. like they're invested in and mm -hmm. then they're going to go do a good job for you. It's a, it's a mm, interesting. strange thing that's happened with the newer generation coming in yeah it's like they they don't for whatever reason maybe there is a misallocated investment that they didn't receive when they were growing up that they're just like who knows what it is like people will say whatever all oh, kids yeah. just don't know how to work or whatever all that kind of stuff right but the reality is is it's not like because so many people just want to be like nope sorry i only work this one way mm -hmm. and that will just you will miss out on talent that way. Mm -hmm. And so you have to look at it and be like, okay, let's be open-minded here. Um, let's see what, let's see what happens with this strategy. Yep. Cause then I would even say like, cause in, in my circumstance, like I did give that guy more money mm -hmm. 
because I expressed to him like, okay, let's make a deal. Like, show me that this is what you can do, and then I'll give you this much. And then I, I worked with him, and I just had a conversation. But it gave me precedent then to expect more. Mm -hmm. So that when I would catch him slack, and I'd be like, hey, we had a deal. I'm extending <laughs> trust to yeah. you, and I expect trust back. And But I have a conversation with the person. Because sometimes it's just like... So many things of these nature can be solved through conversation and not even solved, but the needle can just be moved in a positive direction. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. hundred mm -hmm. percent. So that's your superpower. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the, my superpower. That's the in a nutshell. The effects of your superpower is you don't, yeah. well, don't want to have these tough conversations, right? Yeah. They're yeah. harder for me to have. Um, and what I've learned is it's like, like now in like my my new position and everything that I do now, I know this about myself. So I just establish precedent right off the bat. Yeah. Where it's just like, you know, if I have an issue with something, I'm just going to bring it up. And I just say that. Yeah. You know, it's just like, hey, if I have a problem with this, I'm just going to tell you about it. And I'm just, there's nothing behind that. There's nothing like personal or derogatory. Mm -hmm. It's just, hey, I have an issue with this. Can you please fix it? Mm -hmm. And then, oh, I have an issue with this. Can you please fix it? Oh, I have an issue with this. Can you please fix it? Yep. And then when I have a conversation with him, I can feel out pretty well where he's at because I'm pretty perceptive. That's another one of my superpowers. So I can like be like, okay, he's there's something that not isn't right here. Mm -hmm. And then I can sort of pick pick it apart and figure out what the real issue is. Mm -hmm. And then if it comes back to like, dude, you're so critical, then I can be like, hey, let's talk about this. So it's like for me to overcome that weakness, I just am right up front. Like this is going to be my style. Yeah, I'm just going to bring my your mistakes to your attention right away. Yeah. And it's not personal. It's just, I'm just trying to, we're just trying to, we're both trying to do a good job. Yeah. And then I'm like that just naturally. I'd just tell you everything. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is awesome because so many people appreciate that about you. Yeah. Where they're like, I really appreciate that Jer just tells me what it is. Yeah. He doesn't pull his punches, but you can deliver it in a way that isn't, you're not like talking down, right? You're just telling it like it is. Yes. Yep. Yeah. It's my superpower. I tell it like it is. Tell it like it is. <laughs> I don't think so. I think <laughs> like if I had one superpower, mine is extreme focus. Oh yeah. 100%. I can just focus on something. Like I could lock myself in my in a little dungeon with whatever task at hand, and I could focus on that task for eternity until it's done. Yeah. And it's, it's and it, for everybody listening, like you, everybody probably has somebody like this in their life, uh -huh. but I've never seen it like within Jared. No. Where it's like, no, like your ability, except for maybe like maybe my last boss could do a similar thing. Mm -hmm. But like where your ability to be like, I'm going to go do this task. And then you're just like, and then you come back to me like, okay, I finished all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah. what are you talking about? Like I'm sitting here like thinking about all this stuff, like trying to work parallel and I didn't do anything. Yeah. And it's like, so it is, it is one of your superpowers, 100%. Yeah. But- what sucks about that is that when there's like 10 things that need to get done, only one of them gets done. Right? <laughs> the, the other 10 go out yeah. the window because I'm like, yeah, oh, I focus in on one thing, yeah. right? So yeah. like it's been my biggest default, not my biggest default, my biggest fault with my like just in my personal life, if I'm focusing on work, my family goes out the window or my mm, health goes sure. out the window or my physical fitness goes out the window. So for me to have balance is like, dude, it's tough. It's a tough one. Hmm. But, how much of a, like, how have you been able to achieve balance? Dude, I still struggle with that. Like hmm. when I was growing my plumbing business, I was so focused on my plumbing business and everything else went out the window. And I would say that like, you know, my marriage didn't like, crumble or fail. I didn't die from ill health. Like I didn't push it that far, but, um, and I would say that like the sacrifice was totally worth it. Like going, okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to spend two years of my life focusing on my plumbing business. It was probably worth it. And I think if you asked my wife, she would probably say the same thing, mm -hmm. but it could have been done in a more balanced way and sure. still gotten the same results, right? If, mm. if I could shift my focus at times onto other things. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know where I was going with that. Well, I was talking, um, I asked you, 
maybe I can't actually can't remember what I asked you, but I, what I want to know is just like, well, how have you been able to deal with it? Like, oh, yeah, how yeah. have you been able to notice like when those things come up and like, how have you like m- mitigated that those from being a problem? So like when I was growing my plumbing business and I just was so focused on it, I didn't even realize what I was doing. I had no mm-hmm. idea. Um, mm-hmm. And I remember like my son, he, he edits videos for us now, right? He's our video editor, mm-hmm. full-time video editor. And mm-hmm. uh, he told me the other day, he went and looked at the video on our website or he was trying to pull some shots from it or something like that. And he goes, dad, you look like you just like locked yourself in a dungeon for two years and you just <laughs> rolled out. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, it's like, you just like, we're working on your business for like two years and you didn't do anything else. And then you just rolled out. He's like, you look way better now. I went and looked at me <laughs> huh, and I funny. was like, I was like, dang, he's right. I look pretty terrible in that video. <laughs> that is funny. Is that the one on the prospector website? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So That's if you funny. Want to I watched it, that one yesterday. Prospectorplumbing.com and go watch that video and you'll be like, Dang, he looks pretty terrible in this video, right? I think I was like, yeah, he looks like, dude, I was like ten pounds lighter, a super pale, like I was mm-hmm. not taking care of myself. Um, mm-hmm. And so, like removing mm-hmm. myself from Prospector now, and then seeing that, okay, I obviously like dug my heels in there way too hard. How do mm-hmm. I avoid that in the future? And I think it's just being aware of it. Like I wasn't aware yeah. at that time that that I have this ability to just like extreme focus on things, mm-hmm. even though I probably mm-hmm. should have been, cause I've done this in the past. Right. So like, yeah, I had times mm-hmm. in my life where mm-hmm. I was focused on running. That's all I thought about. It's all I cared about. Mm-hmm. It's all I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And I did a lot of it. Right. Um, mm-hmm. and that's, you know, just how it goes. So how did you become aware of it? when my son called me and he's like, dad, look at your face in this video. So that was when like, did, um, no, I think, um, I, when I removed myself from the plumbing business and I moved down to Florida, it was probably one of the best things I've ever done just because I was removed from the business. So I was physically a long ways away from it and I couldn't go get involved in it. And I re I got like antsy, right? I needed to be doing mm. something. And I was, mm-hmm. I completely lost my focus. I had nothing to go focus on. Mm-hmm. And that's really when I started to realize, hmm, there's like a problem here. I'm like uh, way too concerned. Like, why do I need to be focused on something so hard? Like, why, mm-hmm. why do I feel just extremely unproductive? I felt lazy. Like I had nothing going on. Mm, sure. Hm. Life wasn't enjoyable because I didn't have mm-hmm. anything to focus on. Mm-hmm. which I'm not going to say that's a bad thing, but like then when I do find something to focus on, I need to limit my focus on that. Like, I think it's cool to have mm-hmm. stuff to do work to do. I think we were created to do work. I want to continue to do work, but that needs to be in a limited time frame, And I need to be able to focus on outside of that work time, focus on my mm-hmm. family, focus on taking care of my health focus on taking Mm -hmm. care of my physical fitness, all those kinds of things, Mm -hmm. friend relationships, that kind of stuff, Mm. hobbies, right? That's why I took Mm, up shooting, shooting. That's why I took up mountain bike riding. That's why I took up shooting. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm working on my camper van to kind of give myself Mm -hmm. these other areas of focus so that I can Mm -hmm. kind of like piece out my focus. Yeah, sure. So you can even practice piecing out your focus yeah. so that you can become better mm-hmm. at splitting your attention yep. and still effective at accomplishing all the tasks. Yep. Better at going, okay, it's mm-hmm. van build time. Mm-hmm. I'm going to work on my van for mm-hmm. two hours and I'll be focused as I'll get out for two hours. And then after that two hours, mm-hmm. I need to go, okay, I'm done with van build time. Now it's yeah, family sure. time. Gotcha. Let's go yeah. make dinner and eat dinner together at the table and you know, play games together and talk with each other and have a good laugh with each other. And Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then, okay, now it's, I'm going to read my book or whatever. Right. Yeah. Just being able to, to switch that focus. And I think for me, I'd never been able to switch focus. I would just Mm, stay focused on one thing. And so Mm -hmm. practicing switching focus has been good. Just learning how to go. Okay. I'm done with this. I will pick this up again at a later date. And it will get done. Mm-hmm. And I'm okay with that. 
Mm-hmm. Now my focus is on this. That's been a, mm-hmm. something that's that's practicable and needs to be practiced and has helped me switch just in the practice of it. Gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah. Man, let's tie let's tie this all together to the plumbing business owner and like what is so useful about what we've talked about to that person. Dude, I mean, just like getting to know yourself, right? Mm. Like really looking at yourself. I say it all the time, like growing a business is less of doing all the business things right. Cause you can go learn all the business stuff, right? You can go take my course we can teach you that. and get in my coaching <laughs> program and we will teach you everything, like how to start, how to get funding, how to get your vans, how to set up your price book, how to get your texts, how to write all your SOPs, how to scale, how to make sure you're profitable, how to look at your P&Ls, all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're not the kind of person that can be the person you need to be who's in charge of that $5 million plumbing business, then Mm -hmm. you're gonna have a tough time getting there. So- sure. Mm -hmm. And I say this to one of our other friends who's in business as well. And I say, dude, you know, growing from just one truck, Chuck, to now anywhere from eight to 10 trucks on the road, 12 employees, 13 employees, and a business that does 5 million in revenue that makes a million dollars a year, it was more of like Jared's personal growth that had to happen, right? Right. The doing of the things Mm -hmm. was one thing, but I really had to go, okay, I have, this is my personality and these are my faults and these are Mm -hmm. my gifts and Mm -hmm. what's the kind of person that I need to become to make it to the next level. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important. Yeah. I mean, it's really important for us to be honest with our faults and be yeah. honest with what we're good at mm-hmm. and to be able to speak to both. Right. Cause I think, you know, striving for humility requires you be able to look at both honestly Yep, that you can <clears throat> acknowledge your strengths and you can acknowledge your weaknesses Yep, and then you can guard yourself from becoming arrogant in your strengths yeah. and then train yourself how to be better in your weaknesses. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I'll end it with this. The, the guy that, you know, the plumber that goes to work at his plumbing job and works all day as a plumber is not the same guy in a few years Mm. that's going to own a $5 million plumbing business. It's a, he's a totally different person at that point. And so you have to be willing to make that change and that shift to become the person Mm -hmm that you want to, you know, the person that's required of you to get to where you want to be. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, dude. That's awesome. Cool. Cool, man. Thanks for that. See you, bud. See you next Wednesday. (laughs) Yeah.